Hey all, today we have a rather complicated video ahead of us. Um, I'm pretty sure it took me a lot of time to actually do it. However, the topic of this video will be all about the driving side of things of the new Rensport game. And I'm trying to kind of judge where we really stand. And I also think that the whole driving experience is what interests people the most, which is the most important thing every sim has. And there are two big topics to address before really going into the details. So one thing is there's always this discussion between using an empirical and using a physical model. First, I think that wording probably is a bit misleading. It's not like the empirical model does not have any physics involved. And it doesn't mean that the physical model doesn't rely on empirics as well. I would rather say that the empirical model focuses more on results. And that means, for example, that you have real life data, you know how fast the car is, is going in a corner, how much grip it produces, how many G's, in which scenario, how stiff a tire is, how much it flexes, which temperature it produces or needs, all these things. Um, then you try to match this scientifically measured data in your sim and what you focus a little less about or on is how you get there the target is to match that data first and foremost because that's the most reliable information that you have and when you can recreate that your game is working then you have the physical model and i'd rather call it process focused where what they're trying to do of course as well is trying to match real life data but instead of say taking this tire stiffness value or putting it just as a factor in your equations, what they are doing is they are rebuilding the entire tire construction, including the rubbers used, the uh, specific molecules of that rubber. Um, they are creating the construction of the tire with all the materials used and I don't know, the, the angle that the nylon is put into the carcass and whatnot. And with all that and calculating how all these things work together, they're trying to achieve the same tire stiffness, flex, temperature um, creation and all that. And they're also trying to match that to real life data, but they're taking a much more complex approach by getting the process right rather than getting the results right. And I think this in general, and uh, Niels Heusingveld explains this a lot better in a video I'll put here somewhere. <laughs> um, the, the physical model, or as I would call it, the process focus model is a lot more complex, more error prone. And every change to that model is going to have huge ramifications, huge knock on effects on every other area of your tire model. So it's something that evolves something that is uh, tricky to test takes years of time and we know the sims using that approach are still to this day developing their tire and then also um, it's fairly sure that you can say that no sim is exclusively using one way or the other approach there's always kind of in between you might choose to simulate one thing's more process driven and you might choose to simulate more things results driven so the empirical or physical method. And this then brings us one step further, I think, and we can also look at Rensport in a bit different way right from the start. What matters is both, both um, of those approaches have their advantages and disadvantages, disadvantages, but none of them is per se the better approach to achieve a good simulation. What we don't know is what Rensport exactly is doing, but we can for sure say it's going to be somewhere in between, either more on the empirical side of things or more on the physical approach side of things. Um, the other big topic that we have is how good is your real life data or what is the real life data you have in the first place? And Having spoken to some of the developers from various games by now, it is genuinely hard to interpret the data that you're given from real life teams or manufacturers or whatever. A data set from a test day will be heavily influenced, for example, by various hard to assess factors. For example, what was the grip level on the track that day? What was the temperature and humidity? 
uh what is was the car in ideal condition in the first place was every part of it functioning properly to a hundred percent or just 99.5 percent no matter how hard you try really every car coming from the production line is going to be slightly different especially in very sensitive areas like like the engine for example every part is not exactly the same so you'll eventually have different engine output from car to car even though if the differences might be really tiny, they will influence your lap time at the end of the day, right? Then, of course, you have the driver as a major factor in, in such data sets. So if, if he was in a good mood, you'll have probably better data than if the driver was a bit tired because he had a long night or whatever. And this in the end just means it is very tricky to assess whether or not the data you were giving are showing actual limits and limits in which scenario and therefore it is very tricky to just treat every data set as final truths and there will be variance in those datas if uh, data sets if you take it from one day to another you get different results you're not having the same lap time you're not having the same g-forces you're not having the same grip levels so every sim depends also heavily on the data they have available they depend on on which day this data was recorded, from which driver they were getting this data, how open the teams were to work in the ways that the simulator developer really needed the data. And this in the end also means that all the sims will be slightly different depending on the data sets they have available. And um, just take that as yeah, kind of the introduction to what we're trying to look at today and go through this video with that in mind. What we certainly already do know is that, and I can tell you that with confidence, is that Rensport is trying to be a sim. They certainly have a proper title model, taking out of the fact of how well it works so far and on which side of the spectrum they are empirical versus physical. What is very certain, the way the car behaves, there's a huge amount of fidelity to what is happening to the car. There's huge variety in how the car behaves. There is a ton of situations you can go through. It's certainly not on the arcade side of the spectrum. And what we can certainly talk about is not so much what is their tire model and answer this once and for all, but we what we can try to answer and assess throughout this video is where does the Rensport tire model currently stand? What kind of behavior does it uh, currently favor? What kind of driving is currently needed? In which situation do you get the car around the corner? Because what we all already know, but sometimes maybe forget, is that if you look at our great day game was released in 2008, and even to this day in every uh, quarterly patch they do, there will be some changes to a tire model. The same goes for ACC. Every big patch there is, the tire model changes. If you played the game that was released in 2018-19, it will not feel the same as it does today. So it would be also just wrong to judge how Rensport will feel right now, and because we have no clue how it's going to feel in the future, right? The same goes for Automobilista. I think every patch log in that game is so long that it's almost impossible to read. And every time they come up with new changes to certain tires on certain cars, um, and they keep evolving all these tire models. So with that in mind, let's go into it. So then with all that in mind, let's take a look at how Rensport actually functions right now. Restarting from the pits, the, the tires are set to, well, they have tire warmers, so that's one thing, set to 75 degrees. The tires will cool when you're just standing around. You can see there's um, a pressure set up in the tires, and one difference you can see to your other sims, for example, well, most sim, the, the sim I know the most is ACC always, and there, the tire pressures are a very um, static thing. You can see here that the tire pressure changes a lot and really responds to the load of the tire. Doesn't mean that does not happen on ACC, but here it's just visible on the screen in kind of more of a real time thing in the tire widget, right? Um, you can see the tires are heating up and you'll be also able to tell that after a couple laps the rear tires will certainly heat up more than the front tires 
which is something not unnatural. I guess we'll see the same thing in iRacing 2. And I guess once we get access to actually changing the setups on the car, we as drivers will probably also have more impact on how we manage to control this temperature distribution from front to rear by, by changing the setup a bit. But right now we're stuck to the fixed setups um, and we can only judge the game and car behavior with that in mind. I know a lot of people have been seeing and saying uh, it's probably correct that the game looks a bit um, floaty but I think that's also not the right word to use for that the probably more fair term to use would be that the grip level is a bit vague to assess so I'll try to bring up a chart later where the game sits in comparison to the others but for now I'll try to yeah, just use words to describe how it feels you certainly have a good amount of grip you can see at the lap times that of course the car is making it around the corners and we're achieving similar lap times here as in all the other sims there's always going to be some variants uh, we have the the tai chi cane here on the nubuck ring for example but you can see the car is in general is very uh, lively uh, and the other thing that you can see is whenever you do something on the steering wheel the car will respond you steer more the car will rotate more um, and in the end it gives you as the driver a perception that the car somewhat has limitless which is of course wrong but limitless front end grip and you're always limited by how much grip the rear end can produce to keep the car in balance the changes fundamentally on, on corner exit where if you put the power down the rears are going to slip you will be sideways if you don't take care the game is currently very tolerant to how much you are sliding right you can be fairly sideways without losing a lot of time so there's certainly something where they currently are doing things different and you're probably able to compare this to one or the other game but we'll do this later as well for now again just trying to give you um, a rough idea and we i saw other uh, streamers and, and drivers taking a look at the game but the issue is when somebody is going several seconds off the pace you don't really get a feeling for what the car is really doing if you slow down if you're not tapping into the grip limits then yes the car looks planted it doesn't move but i think this is something that you really have in this game is that the car does move all the time you are gaining and losing grip on the front axle you are gaining and losing grip on the rear axle and the car is never in this steady state in the corner so to say you always as the driver have to work it which for one thing is a very rewarding experience if you get it right but it also makes it quite difficult to just about put the car in the right state throughout a corner to go through it the best way you can you can also see um, that especially for qualifying currently in the esl series we'll all be with the traction control off because it just interferes a tiny bit too much and the driver needs to be allowed currently how it is to really tap into the yeah the maximum slip angle you can you can get out of the tire to really get the car around and keep it propelling forward and the the traction control is a bit of a limiting factor at least in qualifying terms but you can see how the temperature by now has gone up here and this is something that we are watching out much more in the race trim nobody's going to use tc0 um, definitely not longer than one or two laps because temperature does become an issue with how the model currently is and how the setups currently are that we are using in this fixed setup environment and the traction control just keeps the the tire temperatures a, a bit in check but it also helps with controlling the tire wear because that is the next thing that we're certainly noticing in this game which is that we have one or two quick laps i think on the nurburgring this will be the 53s somewhat at in qualifying and then we'll very very quickly into the 40 uh, 54s and later in the race even though it's a short one we'll go into the 55s most likely which means there is a quite drastic tire drop off and you can do your thing as a driver to keep the tires alive 
Um, we're not exactly sure if that's all down to temperature yet or just to wear, but using the traction control in general and not driving as aggressively as we do on these single qualifying laps that is what's needed in the race and there are also some of the perceived or um, um, assessed floatiness that, that people were, were saying certainly is less relevant in the race you just can't go as deeply into the tire in a race because that will just ruin the tire and yeah make you lose even more lap time so yeah that would, these are the first impressions and i think now we're just moving on to a couple other cars and speak about a few other things moving on to hockenheim and i've now switched from the bmw to the audi where of course we have the engine in a different place and the engine is now sitting in the middle towards the back of the car um, a V10, quite a lot heavier probably than the V6 turbo in the BMW. And the good thing about this is that you definitely feel in the driving that the engine is in a different place. So you do feel the mass in the car, you do feel where the mass is in the car, which already tells you, okay, this is important part of the physics. It's modeled, it's noticeable, and the car has to be driven slightly different according to the layout it represents. Then this will also have an impact on the tire itself. So on the Audi, we have throughout the event seen higher rear temperatures. On the other, we have not seen on the Audi the tire drop off being as severe. So this leaves us with yeah, a bit of a open judgment as to if it's the temperature that creates the tire drop or if it's the tire wear that's the tire drop or if the Audi itself just responds a little different to the wear or the temperature or just the layout in general it's less prone to have severe lap time drop off but overall we can say the the cars right now are fairly close which I guess is easier when Developers don't just have the, the BOP in terms of weight and power output at their disposal, but they also have the fixed setup as a way to make it a little easier for themselves to adjust, um, judge how capable the cars are. Then you'll have different curb behavior with the Audi. I heard Max and Moritz complaining a lot about how tricky it is with the Audi to hit the turn one curb here in Hockenheim, right? Um, and I, I would second that for the first couple laps but i think once you know where you can place the tires um it, it's not that hard anymore the only issue might be that it's trickier to do it consistently with the audi but not so much because it's less likely to take curbs in general but i think the problem with the audi is that it is due to the engine layout a bit more responsive to every steering input than the bmw is for example the problem gets even worse with a porsche which is even more responsive with the engine in the back and the opposite is true for the mercedes where you then in the end have a rather well not sluggish car but it's just less responsive than the mid and rear engine cars are with a heavy v8 far in the front of the car and all these differences are something that you can already perceive in rensport they are mattering they you, you can certainly feel you are driving different cars and you could probably tell with the sound and cockpit off which one you're sitting in so it's it's pronounced enough to tell the cars apart and there will also probably be a way for people to favor one leg over the other because of their i don't know what they naturally expect expect a car to behave or how they should behave and that's why they would choose the the porsche over the audi or the bmw over the merc or things like that so these are all i think good things in the sim even if they are not perfectly correct yet for example but that these differences exist and that you can feel them this already tells you that we are looking at a development studio that is aiming to produce a serious uh, simulation game and if we're looking at one or two years time maybe three once we have to find a release and the game keeps updating i'm fairly sure the fidelity to all this will just increase Maybe we can use the Porsche here to talk about a bit about the electronics and the driving inputs in the game. I'll later have a side by side with other games where we can maybe see it in more detail. Um, generally, right now, 
um, in the qualifying, you will not use the traction control for the things I mentioned earlier. You really want to go into the maximum slip angle, or you want to be at you want to have the freedom as a driver to use as much slip as you want to get the car around the corner. Le definitely in the race, at least one or two laps in, you will want to use the traction control to keep the car stable and predictable and not go so deep into the tire and try to use less of the tire, keep it alive, keep the temperatures low to have a good total stint time rather than having a very quick time on an individual lap. As for the ABS, um, there are too many differences personally between qualifying and race. You can certainly feel that there are some sort of lockups happening with lower ABS settings. Even if you can still turn the wheel, the tire still uh, locks up very kind of tiny amounts of time, fractions of time, and those tiny lockups will just keep compounding over the race stand. So if you are running a low ABS setting, you will feel vibrations coming into the wheel. And it still happens on, on higher ABS settings, but it will be less pronounced, less severe. Um, and if you turn the ABS off entirely, yes, you will definitely lock up the tires. Um, the other thing that you can notice is maybe as we approach the hairpin here, you're usually slamming the brake on initial approach of the braking zone. You can trail the brake quite harsh, quite deep into the corner and the car will still have the capacity to turn. It's hard to assess whether that's down to the slip angle or just down to how good the ABS currently functions. I, I just like the experience of the real car. I don't know how good the ABS actually is in the real car. All I can see is that here, the, the higher the ABS level in the game, the more tolerant the car becomes to overlapping combined inputs of brake and steering. Um, and you can certainly, when you're coming from iRacing, you'll have a different opinion than when you're coming from ACC, than when you're coming from Automobilista, or if your experience is coming more from R Factor or Race Room, or wherever you like to spend your time. As I said, right now, the game does allow to use the electronics and be quiet harsh with the inputs on, on the brake pedal especially on the other hand there's still a lot of or there's a lot of work to do for the driver on the steering wheel you can just never throw it into the corner and that will be enough and the car sorts it out for you in the tc no the car will always be moving about and you as a driver have a fair amount of things to do to keep the car in the right place and i think this is also what we saw in the first event on site we did see the people of the field who you would normally judge to be the fastest guys in sim racing be it the guys of Quanda, be it the guys of mouse sports with moritz and max respectively winning heats and also entire event days now i want to talk about a little and really only a little about the all famous uh, slip angles or slip curves because i think even though you can see a lot of footage now that we're allowed to stream and do videos. I feel it still might be tricky to get a proper feeling without being able to drive on your own. So my idea was to bring up these very nice end stage. These are not the original. These are made up or perceived slip angle curves that the various sim racing games have. Starting with iRacing, I think because it's one of the most pronounced, you have the typical perception that you can start pushing the tire, have a bit of combined um, input of the pedal and the steering wheel, have to be really careful on trail braking, trail deep into the corners, never really have any coasting to keep the car very close to the grip limit on the very top of the curve. But if you overstep that mark in iRacing, the punishment is rather drastic and the, drip, uh, the grip drops off really, really quickly and severely. And it's very hard to recover the car from too much sliding. The same goes when, you, when you're stuck in understeer, the car never really comes back to grip until you lose a lot of speed. Then, just to make that comparison, and again, this is a perceived slip angle. This is not something from the game itself. Just This is really just made to give you an idea wherein the end transport might currently stack up. 
Looking at ACC then, I feel the, the initial grip, you can get there quite quickly, but ACC is also a bit more tolerant and it feels like there's a wider range where you have a good amount of grip rather than really being pronounced like it is in iRacing, whereas one ideal grip point and everything below and after is going to be slow or a death trap in acc this is more tolerant you have a wider range to play with and you can go a bit deeper into the tire is how it feels but if you overdo it you're certainly losing grip so that your lap time suffers but it's not like you're spinning right away or losing the car or heading for a wall so this is where i'd put acc in comparison then what I also did, and before we put the videos side by side, I took another look, my 20 years, 20th look or so of Automobilista 2, and there it feels like the tire has an even wider range to use. It's The grip doesn't come as quickly, which is why the, the curve um, doesn't go up to the peak as quickly. The peak is a bit coming a bit later with more steering, with more slip in the end. So we, or I've, I've put the peak here a tiny bit after iRacing and after ACC you certainly have to throw the car more push it more to go to the very grip limit but what I also noticed is in AMS the tires are even more tolerant you can be more sideways you can overdo it much more with the steering you can break harsher on the brake while steering and the tires will still provide a fair amount of grip and you'll never just go completely straight or or spin too quickly because the tire in the end feels like it allows a lot of course it differs a lot per car but i'm trying to give a general perception here and give you a chance to kind of understand where Rensport sits. So here the, the blue line then from AMS2 at quite a bit later peak, but then the drop off from the peak uh, from the peak is even less than on ACC. You can push a little harder and won't be penalized for quite some time until the car really becomes uncontrollable. And I want to stress one more time, these are perceived lines and I've probably made them more exaggerated so that you get an impression of what I'm trying to talk about here. Then let's bring Rensport into that mix. And right now it feels that while the car does have initial response, so the, the curve comes up quickly at the beginning, there is certainly quite some way to go before you really achieve the maximum slip angle and the maximum grip from the tire. And I think this is what people mean when they say or saw that the cars uh, are floaty, which just means the car can move a lot before achieving the maximum grip. You can do a lot of steering, a lot of combined inputs, and there will still be more grip to tap into. You can be sideways and there's more grip to have and the car still moves forward. And again, these are not correct lines, but just to give you an impression, it feels to me like in Rensport currently can be really aggressive with the car, really wrestle it around, really work your hands and feet off to get the car into the maximum grip zone. This doesn't necessarily mean it's easier or more forgiving. You can still lose time if you overdo it, but for now you really have to find a way to get the car that far into the slip angle into the first place. And then you have the issue of front and rear continuously being on different places on the line. So sometimes the front has a bit more grip, sometimes the rear, and you as driver are always doing something, each corner, each braking zone to keep the car front and rear axle in a nice level of of grip to get it around the corner the quickest so with with that in mind with ic uh, with i racing being probably the most intolerant the most peaky slip angle the most severe drop off if you overdo it and then having acc ams2 and rensport one after another let's go for a comparison side by side of all of them
All right, everyone, I hope that this did give you some kind of impression of where Rensport, currently in alpha, already stacks up. There certainly is a tire model underneath that aims to be a simulation. There certainly are fine tunings to be done or bigger tunings to be done, but it does seem like they do have an idea of where they're trying to go. It lines up among the other sims, it looks to be right now on one end of the spectrum where currently the tire does allow you to do quite a bit. Looking back through the laps that I've just shown you, you can see that in Rensport you're usually quite aggressive with the inputs. You can really throw the car around, attack all the curbs, wrestle it, change its direction with the throttle, with the brake, with the steering wheel. While in ACC everything is a lot more muted, more calm. You have to keep the line on uh, the car on a certain line, the only line that works. There isn't too much work being done by the driver. Um, then on iRacing, racing again, everything is as smooth as you know the game, how it usually is. Steep trailing, low level trailing, progressive throttle to keep the car on the line. And then in AMS2, there's also this sort of wrestling the car around, doing a lot on the inputs on the steering wheel to get the car around the corners. So if we had to make that comparison, then I think currently Rensport is a bit closer to the Automobilista side of things than it is to the iRacing side of things. Um, but it's definitely not far away from the games that we already know. And I think that is a good sign both for the other games that they're not doing anything or everything wrong in the past. And it's also a good sign for Rensport that they come to similar results and conclusions partly as the other sims do and i think it will be very interesting to see how they develop this further how the game is going to drive say in a year's time after the next couple of patches and updates and again then i guess we'll just do this assessment again i hope this video was very useful for you hit like subscribe if you want to see more of that uh, most importantly, head over to popometa.io, where we currently have a lot of ACC setups and comparison data. However, we'll shortly add more games to that. Um, and then thanks for watching and goodbye.